My name is Reed from Central New Hampshire Trailers and Equipment in Loudoun, New Hampshire, and today I'm going to teach you all about the TYM T474 tractor. I'm going to make it as fast as possible for you, get you the most information, and some of the things we're going to cover are going to be the different transmission options, uh, the different tire options, what a third function kit is, what the difference uh, with the backhoe is, and a few other exciting things. Okay, so there are four different tire options on the T474. Uh, as shown here, we have the R4 Industrial Tire, our most popular one. Over here, we have the Turf Tire option. The third option would be Agricultural Tires, which have a really tall lug to them. They're very aggressive uh, and kind of have a unique application. Uh, and the fourth would be the R14 Hybrid Tire. Difference between these two, as you can tell, there's quite a bit of a size difference. Um, this is a softer compound, uh, kind of a squishy tire. One thing I've noticed from operating both these tractors is you definitely feel with a load on front, the softer sidewall of the turf. I always recommend people going with the R4 just because of the longevity of the really thick lugs and hard compound. Um, some may say there's a little better performance in snowy, slippery ice conditions with the turf, um, but there's videos out there that kind of say that uh, industrials actually hold their own. So those are some of the tire differences. One of the biggest considerations while selecting your new tractor is gonna be what kind of transmission do you want? Over here, as you can see, we have the hydrostatic transmission with two simple pedals, one forward, one reverse. That tractor does not have a clutch, so it's very simple to operate. Um, it has a three range uh, selection. Uh, so if you have a big load, put it in low. If you want in speed, you put it in high and then you just use the pedals. Super easy, little, I mean, you don't have any clutch plates to worry about wearing out over time. Um, super reliable, we always suggest people to go with this model. Um, the only thing is, is you're gonna lose a few PTO horsepower with the hydraulic transmission versus what you see here. This is a shuttle shift transmission. So this, you have your forward, neutral, reverse. You got your clutch pedal down there. Um, and then you have your gear selection and range selection up just to the right of the operator station. This is a Kook J 48.3 horsepower power plant. What is Kook J? Who is Kook J? Uh, real quick history lesson. Uh, TYM has owned Kook J or a portion of it for a while. They now are the sole owner of it as well as its subsidiary brands and tractors. They have rebranded everything to TYM. So now it's just all TYM. This engine going forward will be called a TYM engine. I'm gonna to refer to it as a Kook J. We're gonna go over a few things here. So just to recap, we're gonna talk about the emission system. We're gonna talk about uh, high pressure uh, fuel injection systems versus a mechanical fuel injection system like this has. Uh, and we're gonna talk about EGR systems and DPF systems. The name of the game with the Kook J engines is simplicity. These are not the fanciest thing out there on the market, but the one thing they are is reliable and simple. They have maybe seven or eight sensors on them, whereas you compare this to a Yanmar engine that might have north of 20 sensors on it. What are Kook J's roots? Kook J Machinery is a state-of-the-art engine manufacturer in South Korea that has been contracted by large companies such as Cummins over the years to produce engines. They are highly respected. Their track record is second to none. I honestly can't think of a, uh, an engine with a better reputation on the market right now. Emission systems. Once you reach 25 horsepower, your tractor has to comply with U.S. emissions uh, standards. Once you reach 75 horsepower, that's when you get into needing diesel exhaust fluid, also known as Add Blue. Thankfully, this tractor being 48 horsepower does not need that. How this compares to some other tractors, uh, let's use a Yanmar as an example. Unbiased, because TYM uses Yanmars as well. Great engine, been around forever. Most everybody knows the Yanmar name. So unbiased, okay? We prefer these engines over Yanmars all day, and here's why. A Yanmar is very advanced technology, great performance, um, 
but they got a lot of sensors, a lot of complication, and when you mix in an emission system to that, it just it sometimes uh, poses some reliability issues that require plugging into a computer, whereas this is a lot simpler. Um, every diesel engine these days that you're used to is probably going to have an ECU, an engine control uh, unit or engine control module. It's like the brain of the whole thing. It's uh, pretty much like a computer has high processing power, um, a lot of different sensors running to it, probably approximately 20 sensors throughout the whole engine, um, constantly calculating stuff. This engine here might have a total of seven sensors. It does not have a main brain computer as some of those others do. It simply has a module that you'll see up here um, for the DPF, uh, which is the diesel particulate filter. And then it has another small uh, little hub to run the dash, the charging system, the ignition, the start and stop but that's pretty much it. Everything's secluded, standalone, uh, and it, it gives these engines just a, a huge simplicity factor that a lot of customers like. This engine does not have an EGR. EGR stands for exhaust gas recirculation. It means that when a tractor emits uh, exhaust uh, from the combustible parts of the engine, it's like, nope, that's not clean enough. We're gonna run it back through again to make sure every little bit's burned off. Um, a Yanmar has that, this engine does not. This has the bare minimum for emissions, such as the diesel particulate filter. Here we have the DPF control unit. What that is, it's a super simple system. It's secluded from the rest of the tractor's electronics. Um, you, when your exhaust comes out of the motor, it runs through the DPF filter and down and out the exhaust. Uh, once this it essentially is ready for a regeneration, a regen, or some people call it a burn. It's going to say, oh, we got enough back pressure. Uh, we're going to flash a light at you in, on the cab. You don't have to stop right then, but you should. You put the tractor in neutral, uh, set the parking brake, fully rev it up, push the button. And what that does is it baffles the exhaust right here um, with this unit and it builds up a lot of heat and it essentially burns and cleans out that filter. I cannot tell you exactly why uh, this is better for the environment, but it somehow is and uh, it's something that you, we just simply have to live with in our lives of diesel engines these days. It's uh, a lot of people don't like it, but it's here to stay. Let's talk fuel and what makes this engine so simple, so reliable, and so sensor free. So it's a mechanical fuel injected engine, meaning that you have uh, this fuel pump, which is driven off of the engine. So as the engine cranks over, um, that's gonna drive fuel up through these lines and dump it into your cylinders. Um, this is gonna be your hand uh, throttle adjustment up to the right of the steering wheel, and this is gonna be your pedal. So um, as you uh, apply pedal pedal pressure, um, the tractor will rev up uh, and accelerate. Super simple, um, there's no electronics here. This is how you shut the engine off, is it's just a two wire simple thing run into the dash where when you turn the key off, um, it cuts the fuel. If not, this engine would run forever. Uh, super simple, a lot different than a high pressure system as you'd see on a Yanmar or other engines where you have a uh, very fancy uh, injectors that are essentially distributing that fuel um, through uh, electronic communication to the ECU. This does not have that. Loader lift capacity, a very important consideration for everybody buying a tractor. How much do you need to lift with the loader? Uh, are you gonna have a set of forks on it? Uh, do you need to lift a ton? Uh, this is rated for 2,152 pounds lift capacity at the pins. That is right here. Um, what you need to factor into that is if you have a set of forks and you need to lift a ton, um, this 474 is actually not going to be able to do that. You need to go up to our 574 and possibly consider um, uh, a weight block in the back or tire ballast because once you get that weight out from the pins, that 2,152 pounds 
might be 1800 pounds out here um, the the further out you go the, the less capacity but for the class of tractor uh, 2152 pounds is, is fantastic um, all of these loaders come with skid steer universal quick attach um, simple two lever design uh, you can swap out forks grapple bucket um, super simple what we have over here is actually a used T474 hydrostatic cab tractor with a backhoe. This unit has 270 hours on it. The customer just traded it in for a 574, wanted something just a smidge bigger, loved the brand, came back to us. And uh, so we're using this as part of our demonstration today. So he has uh, a, the backhoe obviously on this. Okay, let's talk weight. It's a big consideration for a heavy piece of hydraulic powered machinery is how much weight is behind all that power. Um, this tractor, just with the cab, tractor frame, nothing else, it's gonna weigh 3,607 pounds. You add the loader, that adds another 1,020 pounds. Um, and then you have the option if you want us to load your rear tires with a liquid ballast, uh, we use a product called RimGuard. It's actually beet juice. It's heavy and it's non-corrosive and it works really good to add stability to your tractor. That, for this size tractor, loading the rear tires would add 836 pounds. If you add a tobacco, that would add another 1,400 pounds. So as you see, this unit right here, this weighs 6,863 pounds. That's a heavy tractor. Let's go over some of the features inside the cab. Over here we have heat, AC, light controls, wiper controls, Bluetooth radio, lighting. I'm sitting on a super comfortable suspension seat. No, it's not heated, I'm sorry. Adjustable steering wheel. Another big consideration for your tractor is if you want a third function kit or not. A lot of people may be like, what the heck's a third function? Well, we'll go over that with you. It is an auxiliary set of hydraulics mounted on your front loader, primarily used for grapples. So thanks to the skid steer quick attach, you can easily change out a bucket and replace it with a uh, hydraulic grapple to grab brush, logs, whatever you may desire. Um, the good thing about this 474 is it comes prepped for that. So. I'll show you down here, mounted on the uh, valve body for the tractor, where all the hydraulic functions run to. Um, the third function kit is this piece right here um, that mounts up, and as you can see, it adds two more ports coming out. The good thing about the 474 from TYM is it comes prepped already at the joysticks. All the electrical side of this is it's already done from the factory, whereas some other kits, uh, you have to mount uh, an auxiliary switch on there, run a wire. It's just not as clean of a job. Um, so we really like how this is set up. Buy the third function, plug it in, run the lines. Um, it's a little more complicated than, than it sounds, but um, very popular option. Uh, we sell probably about half the tractors that go out. People opt to have a third function kit on. Let's talk three-point setup. The T474 has adjustable uh, three-point link arms. The top length has four position holes there. A lot of people uh, who were running greater blades and uh, fine-tuning this constantly sometimes opt to do a hydraulic top link, plug it into the standard rear remotes. Um, as mentioned before, this is adjustable um, for hooking up your attachments without having to go, especially in a cab, and you have to get back in the cab and adjust that just to get the right height to back up to your bush hog, whatever it might be. This has 32 PTO horsepower. The lift capacity is 2,688 pounds. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram for more great content. Have a good day.